Another brick fan here with my review of Lego Ghost Train Express. This is part of the Hidden Side theme, which was released in August 2019. Let's take a look at this awesome set. This is set number 70424 and was released in August 2019. It has 698 pieces, 6 minifigures, and cost about $80 when it was released. We're going to get to the minifigures here in a few minutes, but let's take a look at the build. You see it's basically built out of two components. One is the train itself, which is the engine and two cars. And then there's a Newberry train station and a little bit of track. As we move forward, you'll see that there's no room inside the train to put the battery pack and the motor. So this isn't really designed to be a running train, but it is an excellent display model and we'll get into the different details as we move through. Let's go ahead and start with the train station. This is just a small little build. Starting with Newberry Station, you see that it is connected to the train. It does come with four straight train track pieces, which is nice if you have some other trains to add on to. But as I said in the beginning, this is really not set up to be a running locomotive. So starting on the side, there's this nice stairway that gets you up to the platform. There's a recycle bin, a couple of chairs, and you notice there's a bunch of stickers on here that are representing the different pieces of the glass that are cracked. There's a lantern on the side, and then on the other side there's a clock, and then you see the sign for Newberry Station. Being the hidden side, this does have some monster aspects to it. If we lift up this sign, you see you get a nice menacing face there. And then if you flip up both sides here, you see that you get some little claws. And then there are some stickers there that line up with those claws so that you see there's some scratch marks on the top of the roof there for the in the train station. On the back side of the train station, You can see that there's kind of an ATM or ticketing machine there on the left hand side and a little bit of space inside to uh, put your minifigures. So again, these claws just retract back, face folds back down, and then it goes back into its non-haunted mode. One last quick detail on this is this bumper piece. So just a nice little build that uh, show is put at the end of the line for the track and it does have a post piece here that the train can actually connect into to keep it in place. So let's take a look at the locomotive and the cars. So here we have the ghost train itself. Again a liberal use of stickers on this. You see the uh, train number there and then the City train logo is right here, which I think is a, is a really nice touch. I like the coloring of this with the black and dark red. Colors are really nice. I like the gold accents that go with the train. It looks good from both sides. With pretty much the same detailing on each side. I'm a big fan of the Lego trains. I think they do an excellent job with those. If you remember when I talked about this little bumper piece, you see there is a clip here in the front that goes on this ball here so it will hold the train on the track. See the front, it's got some uh, trans yellow pieces here, some stickers on the windows to make them look uh, cracked or fogged up. overall a really nice looking locomotive on its own. The ghost features include some wings so there's an action bar here that opens up the side and you see that these nice spring green or lime green wings and there's one on either side. And then twisting this piece here opens up a mouth on the train. 
You see the nice teeth here, again in that spring green color. I really like how this action works. If you look at it, it doesn't just go up and down, it actually comes forward and then up. So, very clever way to make the mouth open. The doors, of course, work, and there is some room inside for an engineer to work inside the train. There's a uh, shift lever here, and then inside there's a gauge piece on a one by one tile. The train comes with two cars. The first one here is kind of a mobile lab, it looks like to me. We have JB that can stand here and work on her computers. And then there is this, uh, what I would, according to the box art, I would say this is some kind of uh, chamber for holding someone who has been turned into a ghost or is haunted. It does open here, and then you can put a figure inside. This is the haunted version of Mrs. Santos. So you see now JB can analyze the ghost either with the train or on the train as it's moving. This is the color wheel that interacts with the application itself as well as some of these other colors. The red, for example, does interact with the application. This train, this whole lab section here is designed to come off of the car. So it's just got some jumper plates on there to hold it in place. But now we can pull the entire lab off the train and uh, separate it. So there are some good stickers here you can see with the kind of a ghost radar and a warning light on the back there's a little bit of detail with some stickers and extra pieces just to add to the ghost chamber itself. The last car that comes with the set is this little box car and it's a very small box car I would say half the size of a normal Lego box car. But it does have this cannon on the top, which you may have seen in the uh, similar to the one that's on the bus that we saw in the trailer from Comic-Con. So you can position one of the characters. We'll take Jake here, put him on the top, and then he can fire the cannon. Just like with the mobile lab, this does come off of the car. And you can see that there are these three panel pieces in this dark red. Some stickers on the side with some slime or something that the ghosts have uh, shot at the car itself. And then there's these nice little brick built doors on the inside. So you could use this to uh, store to uh, capture the ghosts as well as using the uh, lab area. Some definite play features available for this set. And it's uh, really nicely done. Just as one last point, this car actually does come with a standard train coupler. So if you have other Lego trains from like Lego City Line, it will connect to that system from here and then you can connect one of the other cars if you wanted to. So maybe one of the ways to power this train would be to put a different engine on the back coupled to this and have it run in reverse. Let's take a look at the uh, minifigures. This set comes with six minifigures including Jack, Parker, Paul, JB, Chuck, and Mrs. Santos. We're going to start with Jack and Parker. On the left is Jack, and he's wearing his red jacket over his white hoodie. So he keeps the same dual molded headpiece that contains the white hoodie and the red cap on top. And he's, in this case, now wearing a jacket, a red jacket. And I like the printing for the buttons in that kind of a metallic color. 
and then some nice uh, printing for the pockets. But the printing in the middle that's supposed to represent the white hoodie looks pink to me as opposed to white. So the printing there in the very middle of the figure is not as good. He does have some good printing on his legs and the nice some brown for some belt pieces and then some silver. And it looks like he's got a kind of a dog bone there on his right leg. This is a different version of Parker than I've seen in the other sets that I've reviewed. And I like this print a lot. It has some really good details on it, including some uh, patches sewn onto the jacket. So it's kind of a patched jacket. Very trendy and in style. Parker's legs have the same print they do in all of the other sets that I've reviewed. There is good printing to indicate the pockets and the rivets around the pockets and then the tears in her jeans along uh, her knees there. Each of these characters holds a mobile device. Moving around to the back, you see that Parker continues to have the nice patchwork and a very good back printing on the jacket she's wearing. You can see some of her black shirt poking through to your right, which would be her left side of her back. Both of these figures have alternate faces. So here's Jack's grumpier face and as you can see here is Jack's grumpy face and Parker's grumpy face. So these are our two good guys in the Hidden Side series and we'll move on to the next two. The next two minifigures in this set is JB and Paul. JB is either a teacher at the high school or simply a scientist that has befriended Jack and Parker. Not real sure on that backstory, but regardless, she's the one that builds all the gadgets that uh, detect and, and defeat the ghosts and re remove the haunting around Newberry. So she appears in this set. This is the same figure that appeared in JB's Ghost Lab. Very nice headpiece with the integrated goggles and then the lavender or light purple hair. The printing, I like the Frankenstein t-shirt that she wears with her lab coat over the top and then of course a belt with some of her accessories on it. And then she does have an ID badge on, the, on her right leg there. Paul it appears in this set is just a random citizen of Newberry. I do like the banana shirt. I think that's kind of cool. And then he's got, you know, an Argyle sweater vest, it looks like, or Argyle jacket, patchwork jacket over the top. A very nice print. He has very plain legs, however. He doesn't come with any accessories, but JB comes with a mobile device. And you can see up in the corner there the close-up view of the ghost that is displayed on that device. Moving around to the back, you see that both have very nice back prints with JB continuing the belt that goes around her midsection there with a couple of vials and then maybe a screwdriver there in the back. And then you see some more of that patchwork uh, sweater vest or jacket that Paul is wearing. Each of the figures has an alternate expression. I think once again, JB, this is the same one that comes with JB's Ghost Lab set. Looks like she's a little bit uh, frustrated or maybe a little upset. And looks like she has some soot around. Maybe one of her experiments went awry and caused some damage to her lab. And she took some of that force. And then Paul looks very scared, probably because some haunting has occurred. And the train has now turned into a monster. And some of the people that we're on the train, namely the conductor and uh, train attendant have turned into ghosts as well. And we'll show those two in just a moment. The last two minifigures include Chuck, who looks like the train engineer, and Miss Santos, or Ms. Santos, who I believe is probably the train station attendant. They both have the kind of red uniform that looks like they're uh, officially part of the railroad. They are wearing ID badges. So the printing is very nice. I like how I like how Chuck has that blue shirt underneath, and I think they did a pretty decent job color matching the shirt, which is you can see under the tie there, and then the nice pinstriping on his jacket or vest that he's wearing. 
The torso print on Miss Santos is very good as well. Again, she's still wearing the she's wearing that same color tie or kind of a neck piece there. I like the hair piece as it comes over her shoulders there. Neither one has any printing on their legs. Moving around to the back, you see that that nice pinstriping continues on Chuck. And Miss Santos does have some back printing that we can look under her hair to see all of it. Neither of these figures has a, an alternate face. Chuck, obviously, because his hat wouldn't cover it. However, another thing that both of these figures have in common is they both become haunted in this set. So let's go ahead and take a look at their haunted forms or their ghost-possessed forms. So here is Chuck and Miss Santos in their ghost or haunted forms. They both have the trans green head pieces that are common through the ghosts in this series. Even though Chuck does not have a wild hair piece like most of the haunted or possessed people do, but he has this really straight, really flowing beard, again in that nice spring green. Miss Santos has the full, full on lime green hair, which is uh, very dramatic, I think, and is all curly around the back as well. She also has one of these newer lantern pieces. I believe this is the one that was released, the same mold as was released with the Harry Potter series from last year. But you can see it's also in this spring green with a trans green um, cylinder piece inside for the lantern. Very nice spooky look for her. That wraps up our six minifigures. So let's do a make a quick look at the augmented reality application. Now taking a look at the augmented reality app, the Lego Hidden Side app. You can see that I've selected the train as my set. So I'll go ahead and hit play. Say that I've already built the set. Now it's going to give me the directions on what I need to do. You know, make sure it's in a well-lit area, it's level, etc. We'll start. And what it's going to do is it's going to ask me to find the train. So let's see if we can find the train. Here it is. And we get this great animation of the train moving into the train station. Then our ghosts come in and do some create some gloom onto the set. And now you can see what goes on. So now we need to go and find the gloom. So to do that, we change the color on the color wheel. And if you remember, the color wheel is now on the lab car or the mobile lab car. So what we need to do is change that and then find the yellow and tap on the yellow. And now we need to search for gloom. There's some right here. And now that we found the gloom spots for yellow, we need to find the we need to find the ones for the red and the blue. So we would just change it here. But if you see, there's all kinds of stuff going on. The uh, train station itself has transformed into its monster form where it's got its claws out and its face showing. The train here is running a little bit. There's some other scenery around. So it's a really nice virtual reality thing. And if I actually put my hand in the way, you see that it's actually interacting with the set itself. So a really nice... Uh, AR experience. Turn this again to a red tile. Tap on that. Now we've got to find the gloom again. There's some gloom there. Found all the spots. And again, I just have to go back to Now I win some awards and you keep on going on. So very good augmented reality app. I really like the animations, particularly on this train station here. Looks really nice. So that's a quick look at the AR app. Let's go ahead and go back and sum up the review. Overall, this is a really fantastic set and my favorite of the hidden side theme sets that I've built so far.
I think the selection of minifigures is really good. A lot of them have really nice prints, and it's also nice to get alternate versions of Parker and Jack in these sets. The engine, the diesel engine itself, looks really nice. and I like the color scheme an awful lot. The ghost features are really cool and interesting. Makes the train look really menacing. The cars are simple, small. I'm not a huge fan of the coupling mechanism they used. It uh, is kind of difficult to get them connected sometimes, but once they're connected, it seems to work just fine. Would have rather they use the standard train couplers. Uh, fortunately, they did leave the one on the boxcar, which allows you to actually connect this to a different Lego train or perhaps a motorized train. I think it's a great value for uh, the $80 that you're going to spend on it. Of course, anytime you get a Lego on sale is a good thing. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts on this hidden side set. It's time for me to get started on another video. Until then, happy building! If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you'd like to see more reviews from the Hidden Side theme, I've left a link to my Hidden Side playlist here on the screen. You can also choose from one of these other videos. If you haven't subscribed already, now would be a great time to click that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when our new videos are posted, click the bell button.